So we are going to be in Matthew, but we're going to go Matthew 4. And I'm going to read Matthew 4 through 4. So if you please stand here, my Father. We ask that you bring that Holy Spirit into your house, Lord, and ask that you give me the words to say what you need us to hear, Lord. And we ask that you put it upon our ears to obey and follow you, Lord. And we thank you for all the blessings you bestowed upon every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The temptation of Jesus. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Then the tempter approached him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell those stones to become bread. But he answered, It is written, Man must not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from God, or comes from the mouth of God. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> All right, I guess you guys are wondering what the monkey trap is, huh? <laughs> All right. In parts of Asia and other places in the world, people use a method to trap monkeys. Now, if you want to eat a monkey, which they do do, if you want to eat a monkey, all you do is get an arrow and shoot them, right? Put the, cook them or whatever they do and put them on a plate. But in cases that you want to preserve the monkey and you want to have them for like the zoo or as a pet or whatever, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to make a trap. So this method is so incredibly simple, using the monkey against himself. Okay, now to make the trap, we're gonna, you can use either a coconut or a bottle with a small hole or a gourd. So in this sample, we're going to use a gourd. Okay, so what you do is you make a hole at the end of the gourd and then you tie a vine to it. And then you wait a couple of weeks and let it dry out. That way it gets nice and hard. And what you do is you get some kind of fruits, nuts, you know, something that monkeys might like, something sweet. You put it in the gourd. And then you tie it to a tree or stake it to the ground. And uh, so what happens is gourds are common to monkeys. So they're not alarmed when you put this out there. So to an unexpected monkey, what will happen is they're curious. So they'll go up and they'll smell it. And one monkey may go up to it and just stick his fingers in there and grab a couple of nuts. Well, that's fine. So he goes and he goes along and what does he do? He sits there and enjoys his, his nuts or fruit or whatever he got. And then the next monkey comes along well, he sticks his hand in the gourd, right? Now, to keep in mind, it's only, the hole is only big enough to get your open paw through it. Well, this monkey, what happened? He was greedy. So he grabbed a handful of nuts. He said, hey, oh, yum, I love this stuff. I'm not going to share it. I'm not sharing with anybody. So what does he do? He gets that handful of nuts, and he tries to get his hand out, but he can't. Why? Because you made that big enough just for the paw to go through. But for a close clenched paw, there's no way you can get through. Well, monkeys are made to grab whatever food they can when they're out in the wilderness. They, it's hard to come by. They just, if they find it, they have it. They grab it. That's what they don't want to let go. They just don't want let, to let go at all. So, what happens is, is they grab that and they try to release. They cannot release. They are holding on to that. And God made them that way. God made them the way where, where they just can't think. They can't make that decision to let go. So they're pulling and they're yanking and they're hollering and screaming. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? I mean, seriously. If you're out there in the world of this, and I'm sure people are used to this out in Australia or Asia or wherever, and they're trying to capture this monkey, well, that monkey's screaming and hollering and just making a lot of noise. Well, he can't let go. He won't let go. 
it's scientifically proven that they won't let go. So, what happens is, here comes the hunter. What does he do? He throws the net over him and takes him somewhere where he doesn't want to go. So, the monkey is trapped. The monkey is trapped. Usually the trap that catches us are more subtle. After all, people are smarter than monkeys. <laughs> Aren't we? Right? <laughs> you would think. So many people are in similar traps. It may not be lust for fruit or peanuts. It may not be that that has them bound. It may be bondage to lust, tobacco, drinking, drugs, lying, adultery, anger, stealing, gossip. I mean, it could be a number of things. Do you know who it is? Do you know who it is that's hunting us? Do you know? Any guesses? Anybody? Satan, the liar. If the monkey thinks about it, his obvious choice would be to let go of the food and get the heck out of their ASAP. After all, a free monkey will have another day to hunt, another day for food. And he'll be free. He'll be totally free. <clears throat> Just like us, we have a trap and we have a hunter. You know, the doorway to heaven is small. Think about it. If you're a sinner, the doorway is small, right? I mean, you can't get through that doorway if you're sinning. You can't get through that. I mean, gossip, adultery. Why is it so hard? so hard to repent and believe. It is so hard for some people. They just can't do it. it it's, it's, that doorway is so small for some people, you can't get through that doorway. You're going to end up going, to, hate to say it, but to hell. There's certain things that you need to let go of. You know, just like that monkey in that trap holding on, you just can't let go. You know, I did some stuff that you would have thought I would have never been in the place I am today. But January 7th, 1981, I believe I let go of those nuts and fruit. I let go. I was free. Why? Because our Lord and Savior did the ultimate. He paid the ultimate price for every one of you. He paid that price on that cross for all of us. So if you believe, if you believe, then again, that doorway to heaven, or the gates, as they say, it is, it is big enough, it's wide enough for all of us to go through. All you've got to do is believe, repent. You know, like Kelly had mentioned Wednesday night, God gave us all free will. We've got free will from day one. Adam and Eve, they had that choice. They had free will. But what did they do? What did they do? They listened to the liar. They listened to Satan. They made their choice. They had their free will. And so do we. We've got our free will also. We, we all have that choice to go through that doorway of heaven, to, be, to have eternal life. Amen. Awesome. <clears throat> all we have to do, I mean, seriously, Idols and sin are way too big to go through that door. Think about it. Way too big. There's, it says, oh, I think it was in Matthew 
733, I believe, something. I'm not sure where it's at. But it does say in there, uh, I don't remember where it was at. But anyway, it, it says in there, let go. You've got to, uh, what am I looking for? There's certain things that all of us need to let go. You cannot be a follower of God if you're not going to let go of certain things. Every one of us has that one or two things that we cannot let go in life. You know, I'm for an example. If if you see somebody out there without a coat, but yet you've got a shirt, what are you going to do? What does God want you to do? He wants you to take that coat off and give it to that person. Right? If somebody's hungry, feed them. You know? Like Kelly was saying, I believe it was Kelly was saying, you... You see somebody that needs help, or rich, rich, I'm sorry, he had said, you're not going to give somebody money because you don't know what they're going to do with it. What's the first thing they may do? They may go and buy liquor. That's what the devil wants them to do. But what you should do is get them food, help them, be there for them. Right? That's what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to be there to help other people. I know I'm bouncing around. <laughs> but it's uh, let go and let God. Let go and let God. That's what we all need to do. Now, we can go to church. We can go to Bible study. We can get every point out of it. But if we don't apply these things to our life, we won't change. Inspiration and information. Without personal application, we will never transform. Ain't that the truth? This right here. This is what we need to follow. This is our map. This is our map to life. We all want eternal life forever. Amen. I mean, that would be so awesome to go through those gates and meet God. That would be so great, wouldn't it? I'm going to read something out of John 7.37. The promise of the Spirit. On the last and most important day of the festival, God stood up and cried out, If anyone is thirsty, he should come to me and drink. Wow. Isn't that something? Just like going through that doorway. If you're thirsty and you want it bad enough, come on people, right here. It's right here. All you have to do is read this book and follow it. It's all you got to do. If you're thirsty enough and you want to get through that big doorway, you'll do it. Just like I said, inspiration and information. All you got to do is apply it if you want to transform. Right? That's all you got to do. So, I know we're a little bit short here. <laughs> but anyway, I have a devotional that I read every morning, and it's both for each day, and it's by Billy Graham. I got this for my birthday. Isn't that lovely? I read it every morning. But I was reading it uh, on November 6th, and boy, I'll tell you what, it really made a lot of sense. Uh, like I was saying, the tempter, the liar, Satan, I mean, he'll do whatever he can to get you, just like the Lord wants you. He tempts everybody. You know, like I said, he tempted Jesus when he was fasting. He wanted him to change that rock into bread, but he wouldn't do it. He would not do it. So this here is, it says, uh, one of Satan's sly devices to divert our minds from the help of God the help God offers us in our struggles against evil. 
telling us that we have to fight the battle alone. That's what the devil is trying to tell us to do. But God knows we need his help. The Bible warns, be sober, be vigilant, because your, your adversity, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking, seeing who he may devour. 1 Peter 5a, what would you do if you met a lion? You'd probably run, right? I know I would. I think JC or somebody had said something this morning about a lion at a zoo in Colorado Springs. And yeah, they'll attack all right. And you, you'd probably grab a weapon, you could flee him off. You know, grab something and fight him off. If he attacks. And this is true in our struggles against evil. When evil and temptation stalks us, our first response should be flee. And when they still attack, we should use every weapon we have to drive them away. Right? That's what we should do. The good news is that this, God has provided the weapon. His word. Like I said, right here, there's your word. His angels, His Spirit. The encouragement and prayers of our brothers and sisters in Christ. These are our weapons. God provides. We aren't in this battle alone. So why act like it? Isn't that true? Look at everybody here. You all have something to do with the church. You all help each other. You volunteer. You go out of your way. I mean, we all appreciate Kelly. She is great with the huddle. The kids love her. We all love her. She's great. You know, like Bob, some people don't know, but Bob, he sits down there and he does the account for, for the Bible study. Counts the money for it, whatnot, whatever he does. You know, kingdom in. Come on, guys, let's get out there. Let's do it. All we got to do is go out there and reach out and get these people. We need to save them. <laughs> Every one of us need to save them. We need to do what we can. It doesn't matter how old you are. Or how young, right? This young lady here, she goes to the huddle and she's devoted. She goes there every Wednesday night. I know I'm rambling on, but you know, we all just need to know that we need to release our paw, per se, or our hand. Release it from that trap. You know, don't hold on. All of us have something, like I said before, that we don't want to let go of. But who's your number one? Amen. You know, people look at me funny when I tell them, Rhonda, you're my number two. They think that's funny, but it's not. God's my number one. And then my grandkids, then Rhonda. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you'll all understand someday, Kelly. Maybe. <laughs> But the Lord has blessed every single one of us. I know I haven't had a whole lot of time to set up for this sermon, but I just threw something together and I wanted to talk about the trap. But we do. Every one of us has got something out there. Like I said, January 7, 1981, I let go. And it was the best feeling ever. And ever since then, I followed the Lord. I went to school. I got my degree. I became a pastor. But things, I turned my back on God. Back in 2000, I believe it was, or 1999. I got away from it all. And just like riding a bike, it comes back to you. You can't, you can't go away. You can't let it. You can't let the devil win. You can't. 
But if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have came back. We all have somebody that we can look up to or that we can talk to. Anybody. That anybody you can talk to that believes you can get them saved. Especially the youngsters. They're the ones that are going to be our future. They're going to be the ones that are going to be our leaders someday. You know? I think we're close enough. <laughs> but, you know, I think we'll go ahead and close with that. And um, I just want, once again, thank all our vets for your service to our country. I've got a picture over here of my son and my son-in-law. And uh, we sure appreciate what they do for us in our country. And we pray for every one of them. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you just put it in our hearts that we just let go. Let go of that fruit, Lord, and, and release us from, from whatever is stopping us from getting to know you better, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you be with every single one of us as we go through the week and keep everybody safe, protected, and free from harm as we go through the week with the cold weather and the possible snow, Lord. We also want to thank you for all those that are going to be working out in that snow plowing and the city and the state and whoever's out there. Keep them warm and safe, Lord. And we thank you once again for giving us the opportunity to know you better. In Jesus' name, amen.